Hello and welcome back to another episode of Legendary Iron Man. No, it's actually only Legendary, but uh, it is Saving Your Disaster campaign, the Psionic Escalation. My name is Saika and we're playing some War of the Chosen. Today we're continuing our um, Saving Your Disaster campaign. This time, uh, just to remind ourselves, we've just killed the Warlock uh, and reduced the Avatar project by two blips by Skulljacking an Advent Captain. That on the other side triggered that we have no more uh, further uh, options left for us to reduce the Avatar project. So we're running on fumes, as they say, as we're having nothing else left to reduce the Avatar project. We do have a covert option, uh, uh, covert operations now to reduce it, but there are no golden missions. So the name of the game will be for now to expand. For that, we need to increase contacts. And as you know, I've just built the um, necessary building to do that, but it will take some time. So the question is, can we survive in the meantime? Here is the resistance communication, 11 more days. Ah, that's a bit of a bummer. In the meantime, Let's go and do a mission. We got supply a supply rate, which hopefully can give us everything that we need. So this is going to be an, a really important mission. And as you can already see, uh, the team is not looking absolutely uh, great. This is already the setup team. We are going in with two tired soldiers, two snipers, which is okay for a supply rate because uh, they, yeah, it's not a timed mission, so we can uh, go a little bit slower. We got bones uh, with us. Hopefully I can get that Reaper up uh, even further. Uh, biggest prob uh, problem is that he had uh, mm, willfully neglected the Reaper, which I think is, is a huge mistake. Uh, should always have one available. And anyways, we got a couple of explosives. I tried to use both of the exosuits here so that we do have enough explosives and fill the ranks with the rookie. Yep, you heard me. Um, it's time for rookie because we simply had nothing else going for us. The problem is there's also a side trip going. Uh, not that it uh, really matters in this campaign too much because many of the soldiers are of low rank, but the side trip allows us to take no one higher than a sergeant. So it's going to be a pretty rough mission. And we just landed. That is nice. The game gives us high ground. That is perfect. Sky Ranger dropped us here, right next to an obviously uh, crashed Avalanche, I think, were the bombers called in XCOM 1. So it's a train yet again, and we gotta uh, neutralize and destroy everything. Uh, don't be easily fooled. There is a certain chance that there uh, could be enemies just on top here. So we gotta be a bit careful. Found the first patrol. I'll just move to the ladder, mainly to block access to high ground for them. And it seems that there is no one else there, which is good. Snipers take priority in uh, the way that they can be positioned. I would imagine that some half cover here. And yeah, this here is bad because, believe it or not, the ledge takes away a lot of uh, the aiming angles. So might as well instead position him here. Got it. Rookie takes the least important spot, aka whatever is left over. Good, to go. Good. and we're charging in. Aggressive move at the beginning, and from now on we're going to slow down a bit. Good. Not a huge surprise to see them just stand there. What we could do is we could start with a frost bomb and essentially get all three of them frozen in place. 
we could then eliminate them pretty easily. I think that's also what we're going to be uh, to do, to be honest, because the frost bomb it's it's a great tool. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it is, however, often only hitting one unit. If you can hit three and make sure that you can have them in place, that's essentially just one charge for a secure kill. Which is fantastic. Good. Let's start with... Um, Getting the mech down. <clears throat> Luckily, we have finally upgraded our weapons for the snipers. Wonderful. I absolutely love the damage. One of the sniper has uh, blue screen rounds. It's the one that I led with. And the other one has armor penetrating rounds. So we're of course going to focus more on the targets that have a lot of armor. Whilst the rest of the crew can slowly but surely whittle them down. And even if we kill them in this turn, the frost grenade arguably was correctly used, mainly because it forced them to stay in place. Rookie misses, just does what a, what a rookie normally does. Don't want to be spotted out, but what we want to do is get the loot, because we're greedy. Advanced uh, expanded magazine is great, data pad so and so, and the hair trigger is okay as well. Yeah, let's just go back. Good, we're one round in. Let's use the rookie again. We're reloading for action efficient behavior. Should always try to do that if you're attending to just stand there. And there is his promotion. Perfect. Good. Since this is now being taken care of, uh, let's just explore a bit further. All right, Elite Spectre, Sectored, Sectored, as far as I'm concerned. Yep, that looks like a pack that is very much manageable. Moving up. And moving up. What we will do is, since we do have Long Watch, we're simply going to Long Watch and take two overboard shots. Lightning reflexes should not count. Oh, 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 that is bad. And that is really bad. I just saw the alien ruler back there. Oh boy. Oh boy. He kind of left the alien ruler unchecked. That is bad. Alien ruler is behind the truck. All right, if the alien ruler can't see us, it can't act. So what we're going to do is blocking the entrance here. And let's remote start this. Solid damage for the alien ruler. Given its absolute high danger, 
I, I couldn't even imagine what's, what should be more dangerous than the alien ruler on this very map. I am very willing to go with rocket launchers and start shredding him just a tiny bit more. In order to do that, wait a second, we could, uh, let's keep his rocket launcher. And instead we're going to use the rocket launcher of our um, demolition expert. So this has definitely shredded all of his armor. Don't want to deal with either of those guys, to be honest. Do we have a... No, we do not have an option to quickly reload. Still going to long watch. We got an advanced outloader in here. So we can also long watch. I hope that that will keep the alien ruler in check. Can't use 8 protocol because we can't see him at the moment and I don't want to trigger anything. So instead what we're going to do is... Shall we sacrifice the rookie? Well, we can put him into full cover and be the main target. I wouldn't be completely sad if the rookie does not make it. Sorry, Sam, no offense, but you're the red shirt in this mission. And the alien ruler certainly is a force to be reckoned with. We're overwatching and we're overwatching. We got one front person. So what the AI normally would do is it kind of moves up until it sees the first, uh, uh, the first uh, soldier from XCOM and will try to kill that soldier. By the way, this Viper here has now taken like, what, three shots that it all dodged, which is astonishing to say the least. If we were to, uh, well, that's an option, I suppose. We can combat protocol. Well, it's definitely not the best play. All right, free reload. Can we hit that alien ruler? Still is standing there. Doesn't seem to know that we're here and I would really prefer to keep it that way. So let's kill the Viper. We're keeping an eye on the alien ruler. Don't want to engage him yet. We do have snipers. If he continues to just stay there, that would be fine. Reload overwatch, reload overwatch. Moving up into full cover. So if he moves in, we can react. And just overwatch for now. I think we could still see him from here. The alien rulers sometimes, if they don't know that you're there, will just wait. So that's the advantage of the Reaper. Um, I think a little bit of a programming issue uh, or lack of game testing. The alien rulers were brought into the game before the hero classes were brought into the game. So <clears throat> they don't react particularly well off, um, towards stealth behavior. But I couldn't care less in this, uh, in this specific situation. We want to win the mission, and if the game gives us an out, I'll take it. Not even going to flinch. Well, 
so much for that, right? It's still in full cover, which is bad. So we got to be very mindful here. It should run away if we're hitting it now or kind of be on its way, so to speak. Let's try that. Because we have taken two thirds of, it hits, uh, of its hit points. Yep. It is now summoning the gate, like I was predicting. Good, that's 100% hit and I would keep it that way. We're overwatching. Oh, I should have done the overwatch beforehand. We still hit it with uh, seven hit uh, points of damage. That's okay. But yeah, I was not expecting that. I'm going to be honest, uh, that was a nice surprise on top of what we've anyways done, uh, that the Viper King is still alive very well and incredibly angry. Good news though, we have gotten him down to a pretty reasonable number. So everything from now on will be easier. Yeah, if they are continuing to stay there, I'll just I'll just use the remote start. We'll reduce our we'll reduce our payout just a tiny bit, but that's okay. I can live with that. Okay, let's start. That's two of them down immediately. There we go. Of course. Bradford only has a negative comment, but that's it, right? I mean, when did Bradford ever say, that was an excellent play, Commander? I wasn't aware that you could do that. No, he would not say such a thing. We're removing the cover completely. And after doing so, let's just Finish this poor bastard. There we go, nice little hit. Only the best. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Well, nine enemies do not look so threatening, but if you think about it, there is an alien ruler involved. All of a sudden it changes the situation quite a bit. So, all in all, pretty happy that that was a flawless mission. By thinking about it, I I guess we even had uh, lightning hands ready. So I could have probably uh, damaged the ruler even a little bit further. I have not thought about that during the fight. Should have done so. Anyways, larger explosion radius. Yes, please. That isn't bad either, but we do not have Silent Killer yet, so we're not going to take it. And our rookie is an Assault. We can use an Assault. That's great. Love it. Good. Looking at our Armory, well, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad. I was almost thinking we'd be completely completely injured. Okay. So there we go. Let's continue uh, the fight against the Doom Clock. Oh, the one thing that I did not double check is how many resources did we get? Uh, let's see. We got ourselves 150 supplies that ain't too bad. Let's see. The whole problem with this campaign here was 
lack of upgrading of core items, right? Right. And not even having core items to begin with. A med kit could be a good idea. Uh, we are having improved magnetic weapons. And there was, if I'm not mistaken, there was, well, still the hunter weapons, of course. And we wanted to continue powered armor. Okay, we got every normal weapon upgraded to magnetic. That's fine. And we're now getting improved magnetic weapons, so I don't need to upgrade weapons further. I'm just trying to backtrack a little bit what I did the last time. So a few things that are definitely missing are med kits. I don't know why he wouldn't invest into those, but they are fantastic. More blue screen rounds would certainly help. I'm a big fan of EMP grenades as well, um, or flashbang grenades. Mine shields are fantastic as well. Trying to not build more grenades because we have grenade slots and everyone, uh, everybody could use them. I think we're going to go for one more blue screen rounds for now. Could go for an upgrade of uh, the Mark II, which certainly is an option. But I think the blue screen rounds are more helpful and more potent. So let's get a second one of those. And the money's gone already. At least we got some decent uh, return on investment with what we've got. Let's see, Alarium Alloys, both look very tempting. We could get that one. Before we're uh, doing it though, let's see if we can actually get some more supplies by selling something. Is there anything that's in high demand? Mutant corpses, yep, you got it. Don't need more of those, we already got all of uh, them. Unfortunately, alien alloys are not in high demand. If alarium or alien alloys, uh, alloys are in high demand, it's not a bad idea to simply sell them. Uh, they give a lot of money. So, got a few more funds. Let's see what else we can do. We don't need intel. We can certainly require more Illyrium and alloys. Both of them are fine. And we need a further scientist to just get this campaign back on track. Good, so that is fantastic. Improved magnetic weapons essentially means they're almost, almost as good as uh, plasma weapons. Getting more intel for three days. Yeah, that's the game uh, is gifting us three days because it inspires, inspires this. Might as well take the, the hint and get some more intel. We're going to need it as we're expanding rapidly. Good, there we go. What do, ooh. Oh, look at that. We are in a strong position, in a really strong position. You know what? Since we got a lot of uh, both of these resources, very soon we're going to have the resistance communication built. I think we might even sell a couple of alloys and alarium for funds because we're we're lacking money so so badly so it's not as good as if they were in high demand but we can sell a few It's giving us 400. We could even make more if we were interested in doing so. What do we do with the money is the more important question. We got a couple of guerrilla tactics school options uh, that we could theoretically buy, but we're lacking the level of um, our soldiers. That's fine. Uh, there, That's not a big problem. We got a couple of upgrades that might make sense. The advanced grenade launcher is definitely helpful because it increases the radius quite substantially. So is 
Gremlin Mark II. I would just get both of them to be honest because it's really worth it. We will need an enormous amount of supplies to upgrade armor further, so don't need to save for that yet. We could consider whether or not we want to get a mine shield or two. They are helpful if we're going up against the Chosen. Don't have enough sectored corpses anyway, so we'll just get one. And of course, one more blue screen rounds might be uh, the right idea. Or alternatively, uh, since we're almost done with the plasma grenade, let's check our projects here. Sparks are nice. I don't know if he likes them, but we have enough uh, manpower, so that's not the biggest problem. I think we're going to put Shadow Keeper up because that is re a really strong weapon. I guess we're passing on the other uh, items for now and I'll just keep 150-ish supplies in case we need them. Good. So we don't need healing. We might want to build faster. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I'm ignoring the 30 supplies because it's not worth three days of scanning for them. What we want to do is we want to expand as fast as possible. And finally, finally, look at that avatar project reduced by two and we got ourselves a winner here. Good. Reduce avatar project. We're not even going to think about it. Like I said, that's the most important part. Elsewise, the campaign is over. So might as well give it a go. We only have one specialist. Is that true? Oh, no, we do have two specialists. So yeah, do we really care about the hacking? I mean, it's three plus three hacking. At this point, I would rather level the specialist. Good. Putting the low level guys on this mission, couple of supplies. And there you go. Reduce the avatar pro uh, progress a little bit further still. Don't be fooled by the reduction. It can fill up quite fast. So in a matter of days, we can be back at where we had been before. With the number of facilities that we have running, the only real way to stop this is getting the facilities down as soon as humanly possible. And there is a new mission for either an engineer, protect the device, not going to happen, plus <laughs> psionic storm on top of it. Nah, that's not going to happen. We're maybe going to go with a scientist here. I don't want an increase in the, in the advent numbers and we need the scientist. So that's pretty convincing. Supplies aren't bad either. I think we're going uh, for the scientist here. Yeah, so pretty sure that that's going to be our next mission, which brings us to the end of today's episode, pretty much half an hour in, exactly the length of a mission that I uh, normally want to play. Let's take a look uh, what is upcoming before we end this mission. We got ourselves plasma grenades very soon. We got ourselves the research for our heavy armor that's going to uh, so uh, the power armor that's going to continue after the data pad all of this here is not so relevant but the more relevant part is resistance communications <coughs> because those will finally help us to expand and that's really what this campaign needs anyways guys if you like the saving your disaster campaigns and if you're um, in love with XCOM content Please hit the subscribe button and leave a positive comment uh, down below. That would be much appreciated. On the other hand, if you have a Saving Your Disaster campaign yourself, feel free to, um, uh, to hit me up and I will take a look at it. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.